It's been a minute since I've sat down and filmed in front of this camera. You guys probably don't remember who I am. But if you are still watching my videos, thank you. And if you're new, hello. As the title says, I am doing a flat tour. I have moved homes. I moved into a flat that was completely unfurnished. So I got to have not only the fun, but the expense of furnishing a flat totally to how I liked it. At the end of the video, I am just gonna tell you some tips that I have learned firsthand from furnishing my very first flat, things that I advise you to do, not to do, how to go about buying furniture, all of that stuff. But I won't bore you with that throughout the video because I'm sure most of you already know that anyway, and you just wanna see what I've done with the place. So, let me show you around my flat. This is the centre of the flat, it's obviously the lounge area. So our flat is kind of like open plan. The living area and the dining area is all just one big room. So this was my main focus of the flat because this is where we'd be spending the most time. It's the area most people would see. I wanted to go for a really like luxury boutique feel. I didn't want to go for the typical like white and grey. I wanted it to be a bit warmer than that. I wanted to incorporate like marble and gold and then add a bit of like warmth and darkness to it by using greys and blacks. The first thing I looked at for the flat was of course the sofa which is the centrepiece of the room. I wanted an L shape just because I felt like it filled the room in the best possible way and it created the most seating in the most cost efficient way too. This sofa was from DFS. We managed to get it on I think it was half price. So always look out for sofas that are reduced because they are just as good as full price ones. But it is really comfortable and I'm so happy with the way that it looks. I absolutely love the colour of it. It's not going to get dirty easy because it's a dark fabric which is something that was really important for me. I wanted a sofa that I can just chill on, watch the TV, put my feet up, have a cup of tea on and not worry about it getting super, super dirty. The pillows that I ended up going for were like a gold color, like gold beige. And I picked those last. They were one of the last things that I bought for this flat because in my opinion, the pillows are what tie in the whole room and all the furniture with the sofa. So I got this amazing marble coffee table. This was actually gifted to me from my dad who didn't want it anymore. I was lucky enough that I didn't have to pay for a coffee table because they are very expensive, especially marble ones. So I was really lucky to have this and it just filled the space perfectly. Um, it is a rectangle shape. It is a little bit bigger than I'd want it to be, but beggars can't be choosers. So I knew already that I had a charcoal sofa and a marble table, so I kind of tied everything else in around that. The mirror behind me I just got from a really random mirror shop online. I knew that I wanted a big statement mirror for that wall to fill the space. Um, and that is the biggest one that I could find within the budget that I had. And again, I went for a gold frame. It's like an antique gold, so it really ties in with the legs on the marble table. Then I just kind of accessorised the area, really, with like a blanket for the sofa, which is still in the same, like, cream beigey colour. And then I've got this rug down here. It's a sheepskin rug, which I actually bought from my old house that I was staying in. Again, it's like that mocha colour. I just think it kind of adds a bit more warmth and just ties everything in together so all the colours really complement each other. This gold pillow here is from Marks and Spencers. This one is from H&M Home and this furry one is also from Marks and Spencers as well as the really soft throw that I've got to go over the sofa. Then for the coffee table, I just kept it simple because... Although I enjoy decorating the flat and I want it to look beautiful, I do also want it to be practical and livable. And I hate clutter. I like things to be like luxurious looking, but minimal and functional. So on the marble coffee table, I have a plant here. And this plant pot is from Ikea. That's where I picked up most of my like accessories to decorate the flat. 
Then I've got these crystal coasters. I can't remember where these were from actually. My nan got me these, but there's quite a few websites that now sell these. I just think they're a really nice touch on the marble table. Then for the TV side of the room, I just wanted to keep it really simple, keep the space nice and open. I've just got this console table, which is marble. Again, it's just tying in the marble from the coffee table. I got this on eBay. It was £160, which I think is an absolute bargain. Like that's such a good price for a marble console table. And then I've just accessorized it really simply with some candles. And some flowers. And then I've got this lamp here, which was actually from my mum's house. It is supposed to have a lampshade on it. I just don't really like a lampshade on it. I think it looks quite cool. Just how it is, um, might not be to everyone's taste, but I love the colour of it and I love the design. I think it really ties in with the big mirror that I've got. Then I've always wanted one of these lamps. It is a studio lamp. I got this from eBay. I think it was around £100. I did actually think that this was gold when I saw it online and when it arrived it was silver. So... <laughs> I was really disappointed, but it's far too complicated to be able to spray it. So I'm just embracing the mix of metals and it doesn't look too bad at all. It's fine. I can get over it. So this is our dining area, which just leads on from the sofa. I went for a round dining table. Everything was very rectangular. So I wanted to bring a circle into the room just to help break everything up and make it look a little bit softer. So this dining table, let me tell you the struggle of this dining table. So I originally found a clear glass dining table on made.com, which had copper legs. It said it was gonna take six to eight weeks to arrive, ended up taking way longer, got lost in transit, never arrived. I was then told I'd have to wait up to six months for a new table to arrive, which was ridiculous. By this point, I'd already purchased chairs with copper legs to go with my glass round dining table with copper legs. That was no longer happening. So I was desperately searching for another glass table, even with different colour legs that I could potentially spray copper to go with the chairs. It was mission impossible for what was in my budget. So my only other option was to change my order on made to the same dining table, but a smoke black top with gold legs, which infuriated me, but it's not the end of the world. It actually doesn't look that bad at all because the mirror is quite like a dark antique gold. I've got this little pot here, which is quite a coppery gold. And the legs on our coffee table are a very dark gold. So it actually doesn't look bad at all, but it's just inconvenient. So I didn't have a very good experience shopping with Maid at all. So it took months for this table to arrive. But nevertheless, I am happy with it. I do actually really like the black glass. I think it looks really smart. And again, it just gives that kind of like luxury boutique kind of feel. I also wanted a round dining table in this space because I just thought it used the space most efficiently. If I had a rectangle table, I would have had to have had two chairs pushed up against the wall. It wouldn't have been very easy to access them. You would have had to keep pulling the table out in order to get to the chairs. Um, and a round table, I knew that I could fit four chairs in. By the way, I don't normally have all of this stuff out on the table. I was just getting a little bit bougie for the flat tour, you know, making it look nice. This vase is from Ikea, so are the fake flowers. Then the bowls and plates and the wine glasses, all from Ikea. The knives and forks are like silver and gold. I love them, they're so nice. I actually got these on an online auction. They are brand new, um, but we've got a huge set of like 24 pieces. So like 24 knives, 24 forks. These placemats I just got from eBay, just plain black weaved ones. 
And I don't know if you can see on camera, but these are actually like a cream color. They're not fully white. So again, it just goes really nicely with the gold and the vase matches them as well. Now you're probably wondering what this monstrosity is. Basically, we just didn't have enough space in our bedroom for all of our clothes, especially winter coat. So this was just kind of a dead space here that I probably would have just ended up putting a massive mirror or something. But obviously our flat is rather small, so we just needed the extra space. Then this is our kitchen here. We have these sliding doors. We normally just keep them open, to be honest. I'm not gonna show you the kitchen too much. Like, it's not that exciting. I've just got like coffee machine on the side and jars of oats. Normally I have like biscuits or cookies in that one and sweets in that one, but I'm trying to be healthy. Um, we've got lighting underneath the cabinets here and all of this splashback all the way around is a mirror, which again, just really helps to open up the space and it's slightly tinted. So it's not like too in your face. It's a subtle, subtle mirror, which I'm not going to complain about. And then here I've just got tea bags, sugar, coffee, toaster, our hobs here. So that is it really. Loads and loads of storage in this kitchen, which is super handy. And then it looks out on to the lounge and the dining area. Oh, and then I forgot to show you this stand here, which I got from Ikea. I think it's just really nice to have a few things on display. It just makes it look a bit homely. And I really like the black metal on here as well. If you've clicked on this video to see what you wanted to see, and that was my flat, then thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon. But if you do want some flat advice, then keep on watching because I'll go into all of that now. Thanks. Okay, so if you're still watching, it's because you want some advice, maybe you've just moved and you're in your first flat or house or whatever it is, unfurnished, and it's quite overwhelming and it's like, where do you start? The first thing I would suggest doing is live in the space before you buy anything. I know it's easier said than done because how can you live in a space with no furniture? But I mean, rather than getting happy online <laughs> and it's so exciting when you first move, the first thing you wanna do is go on all these websites, buy all this furniture that you like, but just stop yourself. You need to live in the space first to know what you want and to know what you need, to know what's practical, what you're gonna use, and what is just like tit and tat, the stuff that you don't really need, it's just there filling a space or taking up space. So buy your basic furniture first. Always buy your sofa first it's generally the most expensive thing that you're going to buy for your place and probably the biggest thing it's going to be the centerpiece of your living area so pick your sofa wisely i would always suggest going into a store to buy your sofa so you can sit on it touch it feel what it's like feel if it's comfortable get a feel for the fabric because online you can't tell all of these things and this is a sofa that you're going to be sitting on if you're like me, every day watching the TV. So you want to make sure you're buying a sofa that you actually really like. Don't just buy it because it's cheap and it's online because you'll get it. You could be disappointed and in the long run you're going to end up buying another sofa and spending even more money. So just pick your sofa wisely and take your time with it. I went for a neutral colour because I know that I want this sofa to last. I wanted it to be practical. I want my friends to be able to come round, my dogs to be able to come round, sit on the sofa, enjoy the sofa without me stressing that something's gonna get spilt on it, damage it, stain it, whatever. So that is why I went for a dark gray. If you're someone that likes color, I'd suggest injecting color using accessories, for example, pillows because it's a lot more inexpensive to change than a sofa if you decide that you don't like it in a couple of months time. You can easily buy new cushions, have them in any color, pattern, whatever you like. That's just my personal advice. I'm not a huge fan of color personally for my space. Everyone's different, but if you are on a budget, it's important to really think about where you're gonna save yourself money and think 
practically. Secondly, moving on from the not jumping into buying things, take the hand-me-downs from your friends and your family. Even if you don't like the items that they're giving you, it will help you build furniture in your place, see if it's practical or not, see if you need it or not, and over time you can upgrade those things. For example, the table in my hallway. I don't like that table, but it's practical. I need it there. I know I want a table there now that that's there. And eventually, in time, I will upgrade it when I can afford to. But I can also always customise things, change the colour of things, change the leg on chairs, um, loads of different things. Just you need to be imaginative with your hand-me-downs. You can always customise them to suit you. So once you have your sofa in place, then you can start deciding what else you need to fill the space. And don't just put items in places because it's an empty space. Have it because it's practical, it looks good in the space, or you need it. I personally don't like clutter. I like to keep things very plain and simple, and I like a lot of open space. You also need to think practically, like if you need more storage space. Buy a TV console with drawers in it, for example. Buy a cupboard with drawers that you can put things in. But you're only going to know that you need those things once you've lived in a space and you've moved all your things in. Because when it's an empty shell and nothing's in here, it's very hard to know and to gauge how much space you're going to need for your stuff. Even if it means living out of boxes for a few weeks until you figure out what you need, that is the best way to do it so that you don't end up wasting money on furniture that you don't need or that's not practical. So yeah, my main tip is just take your time because taking your time will save you a lot of money in the long run. Don't try and skimp on things because you found cheaper but it's going to break in a week's time and then you're going to need to buy another one. So be practical with what you're spending your money on. Know when it's worth buying a more expensive version of something and when it's worth not wasting your money on something. And lastly, just enjoy decorating. Make the space however you want to make it. Buy what furniture you want to buy. It's so exciting decorating for the first time. I know that I enjoyed it so much. So just have fun with it and take your time. They're my two most important tips for furnishing your very first place. So I hope you enjoyed my flat tour, I hope you like what I've done with it and I hope you found and I hope you found it a little bit helpful, maybe even inspirational for what you could do to your own place. I am going to try and upload a lot more regularly now, I've got this beautiful space to film in, I don't really have any excuses now. So let me know what you guys want to see in the comments below, like what type of content do you want? Uh, I was doing a lot of hauls when I was filming before, but I don't know if you guys get bored of those. I don't know, what's going on on YouTube now? Like, what are people filming? What do you want to see? Let me know, and I'll, I'll do my best to get some content out. I'm going to force myself, um, because I do enjoy it. I do like the end product, and I kind of miss my little, like, YouTube community. So, hopefully I have another video coming soon. Thank you for watching this one and yeah, that's it. Bye.